We are now in our third and final video of the basic Excel portion. In this video, we will build out the formula for how much it will cost to buy different quantities of candy bars. We'll practice copying and pasting and discover how we can get Excel to not go down a row or over a row if we don't want it to do so. Now, we're back in this same Excel file that we've been using. We said the candy bar we want to buy costs $1.22. Ultimately, what we want to do is multiply each of these numbers in this list by $1.22 to determine how much it will cost me to buy one candy bar, two candy bars, and so on up to 12 candy bars. Since I'm going to use the same $1.22 for each quantity of candy bar purchased, I want to make sure I have that price in a variable cell. I had typed this in in our first video and I just left it there. If you don't have it here anymore, go ahead and just type in $1.22 anywhere in Excel. If you have it in B2, it'll help you follow along with me, but you could type it anywhere. You could type it right here. We just need $1.22 in your Excel spreadsheet somewhere. Not in this cost column, just somewhere else. Okay, so I have that $1.22 as one of my variables. Now in cell B6, I want to enter the formula that we used before, which is just price times quantity. But this time, I'm going to cell reference to quantity as this cell here, cell A6. Since I'm entering a formula, I want to start with an equal sign. And I'm going to multiply cell A6, so I'm going to cell reference cell A6, use the asterisk, which for me is shift and the 8 key, because that's where the asterisk is. It may be in a different place for you. And then I'm going to cell reference up to the $1.22. Again, I can do that by using my arrow key, or I can actually click on the $1.22. And I'm going to hit Enter. So now, what Excel has done is calculated the cost of one candy bar. So one times the $1.22. Another basic Excel thing to remember is that in order to lock in this cell reference, I have to have a command after it, like a plus sign or a minus sign, or in this case, I multiplied. If I don't lock in that command, then when I move my mouse, Excel doesn't know what to do. So it might even just move to a different cell, and that can be frustrating for people. Or I see it a lot of times where people will do that when we're using multiple tabs in Excel or referencing to other spreadsheets. So make sure that you're always locking in that cell with a command. So in this case, multiplying by the $1.22. All right, I'll hit enter. Now, here's that issue where if I copy and paste in Excel, Excel's going to assume that I want to go down a row. I do want to go down a row on quantity, but I don't want price to go down a row. So see here, I want A7 to have gone from A6 to A7, so that's good. But I didn't want B2 to go from B2 down to B3. So, how can I get Excel to stay on B2? Let's delete what we have there in cell B7 and enter into that formula that we have in cell B6. Remember, you can step into a formula by hitting F2 on most computers or by double clicking into that cell or by going up into the formula bar. So either option is good. I like F2 because it's fastest and I don't have to use my mouse. Now, I want to tell Excel not to move down from B2. So no matter which row I'm on here, whether I'm multiplying by one quantity or by eight, I always want Excel to multiply that quantity by B2. To do that, I need to add a dollar sign in front of the B, which indicates the column, and in front of the two, which indicates the row. And that's going to tell Excel to always pull from that column and that row. A shortcut way to do that, the shortcut key on most computers is F4. So as long as I'm anywhere in this B2, I could be at the end of B2, the beginning of B2, or right in the middle, and I hit F4, it'll put a dollar sign in front of B and in front of 2. If I hit F4 again, it'll move the dollar sign to just be in front of the 2, or to just be in front of the B. It just depends on how many times I click F4. If I click it one last time, it'll remove the dollar signs from all of them. 
it's fine right now to have the dollar sign in front of the B and in front of the two. Uh, later in another video, we'll look at where we actually need to have that because having the dollar sign in front of the B locks in the column, having the dollar sign in front of the two locks in just the row. So it gives us some different options. Again, it's fine to have the dollar sign in both places. If the F4 shortcut doesn't work for you, you might Google what shortcut to use on your computer because we are gonna use this function a lot. Or you can just manually type in a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the two. So if I were to do that, I would just type in a dollar sign in front of each of those items. Now, if I copy the formula from cell B6 down to cell B7, it moved down from A6 to A7, but it stayed on B2 right there, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So I can copy and paste this all the way down, and now it still stayed on B2 no matter where I went in the spreadsheet. In fact, if I had copied this formula all the way over here, it would still pull cell B2. Let's look at a few other things to make things faster for you. So I'm going to delete what I already typed in here. Another faster way to copy and paste this all the way down is I could drag it and that would work. Or an even faster way is that if I'm on this cell here, and again I'm going to make my cursor go from the white cross to this black cross here by scrolling over just the bottom right corner of the cell, then I can just double click and Excel will populate that formula all the way down to where there is a value to the left or to the right of it. So in this case, since there's a 12 and then nothing else, Excel will stop right where there's a value here. It won't keep going where there's no value. So you can see it populated that formula all the way down. And again, all I did was double click here on the bottom corner. Or if you're more comfortable, you can copy Control C or right click and copy and then paste all the way down. Another way to paste down quickly is Control Shift and your down arrow, and that will highlight all of the cells that again have something to the left of them, and then you can paste. So lots of ways to accomplish it. Whatever is most comfortable or fastest for you is what you should use. The last thing that I need to do is save this file. I can save by going to File, Save As here, or a shortcut to do that is just hit F12. And I'll save this file just on my desktop as Basic Excel or whatever you want to save it as. You might want to save all of your files for this module in the same place just so you have them all together. And then I'll just hit enter and now my file is saved. I probably should have done that at the very beginning, um, but I was just using a basic Excel file. So if you hadn't already saved your file, make sure you do that at the very beginning. Uh, sometimes Excel doesn't function well if it's not saved, if the file is not saved, um, or you just lose your work. So make sure to save your work. That ends our basic Excel videos. We will use all of the skills that you learned in these videos and the content moving forward. So again, make sure you're practicing these skills and we'll add quite a few new skills as well. And now you should be ready to jump into the business math and Excel module that we have prepared for you.